only about half of the CO2 that we're putting out into the air is actually staying in the atmosphere, whereas the other half is being taken up by the terrestrial biosphere and by the oceans. This is a tremendous service that the natural component of the carbon cycle is providing to us because rather than feeling the full impact of our fossil fuel emissions, we're only feeling about half of the impact of our overall fossil fuel emissions. From a policy perspective, what we're trying to do is develop schemes or strategies for limiting the amount of climate change that we observe. And in order to do that, we need to understand two things. One is, what are we as humans going to do differently into the future? But the second thing we really need to know is how is the land and the oceans going to react to our actions? So in other words, if we change our behavior, are land and ocean going to continue taking up as much carbon as they are today, or will that change as well? Overall, what we're trying to model is really the, the budget. So if you think of the atmosphere as being a control volume, we want to know what's coming in, and we also want to know what's coming out. Because by understanding all of the processes that go into that control volume, we can not only figure out what's happening today, but we can have better predictive power in terms of understanding how the climate might change under different scenarios. Countries don't necessarily know how much they are emitting. One of the things that countries do is try to report their own emissions on a yearly basis. And they can also go back and provide revised estimates of what their historical emissions have been. And it turns out that for many countries, their own revisions of their own historical emissions can vary by 10 or 20 percent easily. And for some of the smaller countries, even by well over 100 percent. This means that even the countries themselves don't fully understand what the total impact of their emissions actually is. And so the bottom line is self -report reporting isn't always a reliable way of actually getting at emissions and if we're talking about slow incremental reductions then having uncertainties on the order of 20 percent just does not really cut it. A lot of what my talk was about was how can we use atmospheric measurements of concentrations of these greenhouse gases to better understand how big the emissions are and also how the processes that operate between the emissions and the uptake actually work. In order to do that, we really need very sophisticated computational methods, mathematical methods, statistical methods to in a clean and robust way represent the linkage between the information content of the atmospheric data with what is actually happen happening at the Earth's surface. And it's not at all a trivial problem, and especially as the data volume gets larger and larger with the advent of satellite measurements of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, we really need very concrete innovations on the computational and numerical side, and this is where I think the CSC community is really key.